Okay guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and explain um, what the slave select pin, uh, well we know what it does, right? It's just to select a slave, but I'll explain the different ways you can configure it, um, what effects that has, and even in an alternate mode of using it, and even when you shouldn't use it at all. So let's go ahead and, and see what the data sheet has to say about all of that. Um, Okay, so we know that this is the slave select pin, or in other words, the chip select. Um, the data sheet refers to it as NSS. <laughs> and there are two bits and two modes um, which you can manage that pin. Um, one is software management and one is hardware management. Um, so what does that mean? So for example, here is an example of uh, SPI in full duplex mode. If you have this pin to be managed by hardware, uh, in other words, you have hardware enabled, or in other words, again, software disabled, software management disabled, what happens is that when you transmit on your SPI, the hardware by default will automatically set this line low. And when this line goes low, it, sig it signals the slave to start listening on these lines. So that's when the, um, the hardware management is enabled, aka software disabled. Okay, what happens when software is enabled? Well, when you have the software management of this pin enabled, then you have to configure a GPIO pin to act as a slave, and then you have to connect it over here and have it, um, and, and you control it in your software when you want that GPIO pin to go low. So why would you want to do that? Well, take for example, if you have one master and you have multiple slaves, okay? Let's say this SS1 is your NSS pin, the one that's um, in the SPI by default. So for example, um, right here, your NSS pin, right? Because your SPI has four pins, your MOSI, MISO, your clock, and your chip select pin. So this is the one we're talking about. Um, and right now it's enabled. So if you have that pin enabled to be controlled by hardware and you're using multiple slaves, what's going to happen if you want to talk to slave two? If you want to talk to slave two and you have hardware management enabled, in other words, the hardware is going to control the slave select pin, what's going to happen? Let's pretend this first pin is that NSS pin. So when you start transmitting here, by default, since hardware management isn't enabled, it's going to take this pin, drive it low, it's going to signal this slave to turn on. But that's not the one you want to talk to. You want to talk to slave 2. Okay, so then let's say these other SS2, SSN, and many more, let's say they're connected to GPIOs. Well, you can, you know, put this to a GPIO and, and connect it to um, a slave, um, and then take this GPIO and pull it low and it'll activate this uh, slave. But at the same time, you're also activating this one because it's hardware is enabled. So you can't do that. So what you have to do is you have to disable the hardware management of that NSS pin. You disable it, you take this pin and it'll once you've disabled it, this NSS pin becomes a regular GPIO which you can in fact still connect up to a slave. It'll just be a regular GPIO and it won't be the internally managed um, NSS pin. And that's how you would use a, um, the GPIOs in a multi-slave uh, configuration. So as you can see here, here's the NSS and it's turned on. But if I disable that, what happens, it becomes a regular pin that you can use it as a GPIO or whatever it is that you need to do. You can still use it as a slave select, but technically you're using it as a GPIO pin and not the actual hardware uh, slave select. So that is how and why you would choose either software management um, or hardware management. And that is all controlled by one bit in the SSM bit, which is right over here, the SSM bit easy peasy isn't it now another thing that the um <clears throat> the nss uh allows for 
is what's called multi-master communication. So what happens when there's actually more than one master? Um, how does one master signal the other one that it's talking if there's no way, no communication between them, right? So then we have to make a communication between them. In that case, what happens is you actually use the NSS pin as a, a way to communicate to other masters, right? Um, in that case, you disable the, you, you again, you put the NSS pin, the actual NSS or the slave select, you go to software management so that your software manages the selection of slaves and not the pin. So now that the pin is freed up, you can actually connect this NSS pin of one master to a regular GPIO of another master or another microcontroller or whatever. And that's how, um, and then you put it in input mode and that's how you signal another master that you're actually currently using the bus. So if this master wanted to use the bus, it would put a high level over here on this NSS pin and then this NSS pin is set up as NSS input and it'll tell this master, hey, somebody's on the bus. I can't use it right now. And likewise, when this master wants to use the bus, it would put this GPIO high and it'll signify this, at this master via this NSS input that, hey, somebody's on the bus. I can't use that. And if you look here on cube, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can actually set the NSS as an input signal. Now, if during your, um, here on the data sheet, it says that if you're in, if that NSS level is high, um, if the microcontroller is acting as a master on the bus, this configuration allows for multi-master capability. If the NSS pin is pulled low in this mode, the SPI enters master mode fault state and the device is automatically reconfigured into slave mode. So what this is saying is that, um, well, let me show you the data sheet here better, that when these two masters are talking, or not talking, but let's say when this master is in control of the line and he's pulling this line high to tell this master that it's using the bus, and if for some reason um, this line gets pulled low, then this master will automatically be reconfigured into a kind of mode fault or slave configuration. So it'll release the bus because for some reason something, you know, he's currently using the bus. He has it high to signify the other master that he shouldn't use the bus. But if for some reason this line goes low, um, whether it's noise or maybe the, he puts it low, I don't know, whatever reason it goes low, it's the behavior is that it's going to um, let go of the bus and it's going to go into a slave configuration. Um, and again, this is all managed by basically one bit, whether you're enabling or disabling software management. And uh, that is here. Um, what else? I'm not going to get into the registers until we get to the next video. But now that I've explained everything, all these bits will make sense because I've already explained the, uh, the concepts uh, behind them. Okay. So that basically does it for, um, for I guess, the overview of the, the SPI peripheral. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything. I had a lot of issues making these videos. Um, but if, if you do have any questions or I left anything out, feel free to comment or even message me on Instagram if you have issues. Sometimes you guys message me with uh, specific questions like um, somebody messaged me today that their I2C was stretching the clock low and transmitting data or something. Okay, that's a very specific problem and it could be so many things that are going on like why is it stretching low who is it the transmitter the receiver or you know what's going on here that's very hard to solve on top of that i can't see your code 
So it's hard. Yeah, I'm not a debugger. I don't, you know, I can't just run your code in my head and oh, see, this is wrong or that's wrong. It could also be a hardware problem, maybe a bad connection. So when you do send me questions, um, if they're very specific like that, I don't know. I don't. I get hard to just in my head be like, oh, this is what's going on when I don't know what device you're using, what chip you're using, what sensor you're talking to. I know nothing. So when you do ask me questions, guys, try to make it more about what I'm talking about here. Like if you have a specific question about this and not necessarily an error that your debugger is throwing at you or your environment is throwing at you, because that's going to be very hard for me to um, figure out. You know what I mean? Um, Okay, yeah, so in, this, in the video that's going to follow, um, hopefully tonight, um, well, you'll know if it's tonight because I'll be wearing the same thing. Um, I will go into the um, two or three registers that are required to set up the SPI. And after that video, then we'll get into the code, and that should be one video also. And that's it, guys, as far as SPI is concerned, okay? Thank you.